Okay, here's my first attempt. This is just the face of the headrest. So it's going to be a two-tone. And I put this together last night. You can see the French seams there. A uh, little user error. There's a little variation in there. You can see some puckering on the back. I just need to glue them down. So I'm going to do some gluing on the one tonight. What I didn't like was that curves in a little bit too much, so I adjusted. And the important thing I wanted to show everybody, I'm approaching this just like I approach metal work or anything else. If you want to make more than one thing and you want to make them identically, you've got to make a pattern. So I took, I don't see it, it's up here somewhere. I took my original headrest, the, this face piece, and traced it traced and put a center line on it and turned my paper, folded it like that in half. Wow, big storm. Folded it in half and cut it out so that both sides would match. And then I took a uh, steel ruler. I drew three dots on here and used my steel ruler. Uh, just bent like that to make this curve here. It's just a lot more shallow so you can see uh, it's a lot more shallow than, than this one, so if I can get it on there straight. There you go. A little bit more shallow. Um, so we'll see how it looks. So I'm going to make one of these up. But then on my pattern, I've got a right side, dang, left side, add half an inch all the way around. I've got center lines going this way and this way so that everything will line up. And then I've got notes about... Uh, where where the edge piece starts and stops so that this will fit over the piece. So then, uh, here you go. You trace the right side and then you add half an inch all the way around. I transfer the centering marks onto here and uh, there's where my edges start and stop. I figure I just mark that out while I got the patterns laid down. So then those match up here and actually, you know, you're seeing half an inch on both pieces, so if I were to uh, do like so, uh, that's, that's about where it'll set. So I can line these all up. Well, then when you go to sew them, you've got to put the pieces together, you know, good side to good side. Problem is they're kind of funky, right? The curves go opposite directions, so you got to find a place to line up this point right here with this point here. So uh, what I found works is I can cut into here and just stop right here, and that gives me, you know, the spot on the back side. It kind of identifies it. Then I can take this, line it up, because it really doesn't make sense when you look at it. It it doesn't fit together right when they're backwards like this. So you've got to find those points to go back to back, and that's where you start. And then I've got my center lines there, here, and here. So when I get to the middle, if those aren't lined up, you just stop. Uh, undo, you know, take your X-Acto knife, cut everything apart, try it again until it all lines up. So. Uh, I'm going to try and stitch these together here real quick and see what we come up with. Okay, it took me a little time to put this together, but uh, I've got it done now. I just want to let you know, too, when I was laying this all out on the back of the fabric over there, uh, I found dots. You can just barely see. I've got a perforated pattern, right? And... Uh, on the back you can see the dots coming through so I found a dot at the center top and bottom and then I found a line of dots this way so that everything is even across the bottom across the top and when it comes down to it they'll be you know these will be straight up and down when it gets all sewn in you can see I think you can see the French stitches there so I decided to go with just a a white thread because this is kind of off-white and this is a brown 
and I thought if I put a green in there it would look really strange um, but this is just following the seam with the cording foot that's on that's on this machine so uh, that actually helps keep a really really straight line so um, that's all I got time to do tonight is this little piece here um, hopefully in the next couple days I'll have some time to put together the ring that goes around this and I'm not sure if I'm gonna do this fabric uh, above here so like this fabric will turn over the top of the seat or if I'm just gonna use this fabric and kind of wrap the edge um, I'm gonna put a French seam around this edge uh, and then on the back panel I'll have a uh, what do you call that, a corded or a uh, piped edge where where the ring around this connects to the piece that's the, just opposite of this face, so the back face will be piped. So i got to figure out if I want this pattern to just go the next inch or two and then in, die into the piping, because the piping is going to be this color. So anyway, uh, this went together really well, but I'm kind of surprised. I guess, you know, you spend the time and do the patterns and measure everything. It should go together fairly easily. I did have some trouble with this thread. I don't know, it got a little frayed up or something, and the machine was having issues with it getting stuck down inside of there. So maybe I need to open that up and clean everything out a little bit and just kind of, I don't know. You can see how much threads you go through, just little bits and pieces every time you got to cut this stuff off. So yeah, that's all I got for tonight. Okay, here it is. Um, I still have the bottom to put on, but I've got a. Uh, there's the piping. Got a flap there to cover it. Uh, the piping might be a little bit large. I might need a smaller size. Just I don't know. But uh, got the French seam put on here and uh, we had those last night and uh, just kind of worked it around. Uh, I'm going to go test fit it on the car and see what happens. Okay, so here it is on the car, or on the car seat. Um, it still needs a, a bottom piece on it and then that gets stitched in. So. Um, I took a little time stretching it, but not a lot. So, uh, but what I do like is this line here and that line here are going to be the edges of the uh, inset panel that's going to match this piece. Um, and it, as it flares out, it it looks like it's pointing toward those lines, and that's what I wanted. So I decided here, um, up here not to wrap this material back but to stop it here with the uh, French seam there and then use a piping that was the same color as this. Um, I started thinking about the convertible top co boot cover and the boot is going to be this color and I wanted a contrasting piping on the boot so that would be the white piping. If I do white piping there I don't want to do dark piping on the seats. I know it's getting kind of, I don't know what, I feel like a decorator or something like that. But anyway, uh, needless to say, I think the pattern works. I need to work on my sewing just a little bit more, but I'm, I'm pretty darn close. I'm really happy. Uh, there's a few spots where I kind of, I don't know, I didn't lose control of the machine, but I didn't have control like I needed to have. But uh, for a first round, the, the pattern is good sized, it fits well, uh, and like I said, when I pull it together all on the bottom, I think, uh, I think I'll be able to pull a lot of the imperfections out of, out of this guy, so uh, I'm happy with it. First round.